I wanted to thank you for coming to today's presentation. I will mostly be in product, uh, but I'm going to go through a few quick slides to begin with. But we, we decided to entitle uh, this presentation today, this webinar, Elevate Your Practice, an Introduction to the New QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Online Accountant, Improving the Business of Life. So the, the goal was to just align everybody on what, you know, some of the core features and functionality are in QBO, advantages over desktop, and then when desktop might be key uh, over QBO. And then, of course, the new QuickBooks Online Accountant, which is really for the firm and the accountant platform managing their clients and the staff who access those clients. We'll talk a little bit about third-party apps as well because it's really an ecosystem with QuickBooks Online as the central hub. The agenda today, we're going to quickly go through some key industry trend info and kind of into its vision with that. Obviously, it's mostly cloud or internet or mobile or, or whatever term you want to use for that. The, and then the QuickBooks Online uh, version differentiation. I'm sorry if SKU confuses people. You probably think an inventory parts or something, but I, I meant to put version. You know, there's three different versions. Well, a quick slide on that. And then we're going to go, when, when I show about, uh, you know, some key things of desktop, We'll talk about that, QuickBooks Online Plus, and when that's critical, uh, versus Essentials. And that will all be in PowerPoint. I'll come back to the PowerPoint for the last subject, which will be converting from QuickBooks Desktop. But the rest of the time in between, we're all just going to be in QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Online Accountant. And, and because we have a, you know, about 72 uh, minutes, I just wanted to pick some key things that are important to the workflow and, and also try to relate it to uh, what you're used to in desktop. So if you're a champion desktop user, that's great. I'm, I'm glad you're here. If you solely focus on QBO, even better. Okay, so I have some key things in red just to keep, so I don't spend too much time on these slides, um, but trends for, for technology. Obviously, shift is more for information communication away from just like data entry computing. So from the computer to mobile, most of the features you see me do in QuickBooks Online today, I can do on the iPad, and I can even do more and more on the uh, iPhone or draw or Android there. Uh, we even added online banking, for instance, onto the iPhone uh, as, as little as maybe a, a four or six weeks ago. So it's stuff like that. You're out, you're out there, you want to do an invoice, you want to receive a payment, create an estimate, view some customer info, do an expense, take a picture of an expense, have it create a transaction in QuickBooks Online. All that's available from your phone, right? And then you can always go to QBO from the iPad. So there's that too, transforming how we communicate, collaborate, and educate. <clears throat> when I'm home at night, I'm usually hanging out on the phone or my iPad. I'm not really using my laptop except for at work, right? So even myself, and I'm kind of a, a older school than most, I'm still on the mobile devices. Um, <clears throat> millennials. I am not a millennial, 47. But anyways, a lot of friends uh, of mine I, that are millennials, and I, can, I understand them for the most part, they'll soon be the largest market you know, if not already. And they're all, they're not installing any software anywhere, right? They're downloading the apps and they're using them. They're, they're totally uh, on the interwebs, if you will. And then, of course, uh, small businesses moving to the cloud. From an Intuit standpoint, more new users picked QB over the desktop this year than any year before. And that's important. Like 40% more chose QB over desktop. These are new users. And we're also converting, I think last year was 17%, this year more like 30 33% you know, Pro and Premier users over to QuickBooks Online. So for the firms that are here, you're obviously either using QBO or maybe you're not sure about it, but you're going to start getting questions from your client base and as your client base grows younger. So we're really heavily investing in, obviously, QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Online Account and the ecosystem that's around that. We'll get to third-party apps uh, later on. And just a quick uh, stat, uh, we add about 4,000 new QBO uh, subscriptions every 10 days, and it's global as well. Now, this was as of the end of first quarter for Intuit, um, just a little numbers here. Delivered total company revenue of $672 million, up 8%. That was for, for the cl from cloud revenue. Uh, grew total QuickBooks Online subscribers by 42% right, from the previous quarter. Increased QBO subscribers outside of the U.S. by more than 170%. For example, it's now the number two software in Australia. And then small small business online ecosystem revenue grew 30%. And it has a lot to do with payroll and payments also, right, that's coming in, because we're, we're we have the biggest payroll share, really, in the U.S. right now is the Intuit payroll. Um, but a lot of this is QuickBooks Online, and most of it's QuickBooks Online. So that's kind of where we're going, you can see. So you're going to have more conversions from desktop and things like that. And here's kind of the wheel. 
on the right side are you guys, on the left are your clients, right? The clients want to grow their business, uh, help them with cash flow and quicker data entry, uh, or automate the data entry. We'll look at online banking and downloaded transactions, and tools to help them manage my business. And QBO will be the hub. They can even pay their employees, but they might also use third parties, like Tally, a great expense one, or T-Sheets, track their time, and GPS tracking of their time, um, or Method as a CRM tool. You can have three or four or five apps all hooked in, and they're all plugging in and playing with each other and going to QBO at the end of the day, and it just helps out on workflow and data entry. And so with QuickBooks Online at the hub, if you will. I mean, the goal for Intuit is to be a small business software uh, worldwide, really, particularly where we are in the U.S., it's uh, very popular now, this QuickBooks Online. And on the right, you know, you guys are doing book, you know, the accounting side or tax. And so we'll be looking at QuickBooks Online accounting as well. Okay, so extensible, as I already mentioned, a lot of this stuff you see will be on different devices, okay? I'm on my laptop today, I got dual monitors, we'll be going over some Chrome tips and tricks uh, as well, but like I say, a lot of the stuff I can do in the iPad or the phone. The browsers that we support for QuickBooks Online, Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari if you're on the Mac or Chrome on the Mac, and then Internet Explorer 10 and 11. Uh, every firm's different. Well, I really like Chrome and encourage Google Chrome for QuickBooks Online, and I'm going to show you a few things why, dealing with trying to create a quote-unquote open window list, a top icon bar, um, and being in multiple company files at the same time So uh, with one login. So Chrome is really good for that kind of, of stuff. Firefox also has some abilities as well. And Internet Explorer, it's really up to you. Some firms, you're kind of locked into using IE, so I, I really like 11, and then 10 is good too. For me, IE is just a real paranoid operating system. So I like Chrome a lot, and that's what I'm going to be in. Um, the one thing about Chrome, it's, it's almost like a knock on it, I do clear cookies a couple times a week. I find that it caches a lot. So that's the only thing about Chrome, but there's a way to set that up in an auto way. So most of the people using QBO and the phishing autos out there, you know, just don't take my word for it. Google Chrome is a preferred browser for uh, QuickBooks Online. Okay, we're getting real close to hopping into product there. And by the way, any questions you have, is particularly when we're in product or I'm, I'm going through some navigation tips and tricks, just go ahead and shoot it in the chat area on the right in your window, and I will see it. Even when I'm shared out, I'll get a pop-up. And I, can, I like to do the questions on the fly. I don't want to wave them at the end. Um, let's see, is a PowerPoint available? Oh, thanks, Michael. No, um, but um, I'll put my email in at the end, and uh, you can email me, and I'll shoot you the PowerPoint deck. I, oh, I might have uploaded it, when you got, uh, but it would have been on the registration page. I think I did upload it on the registration page, but if you've already gone ba past that, then I don't think you can download it. But I'll, I'll just sh shoot it to you. Um, and there's nothing in this deck that you, can, you can't view, for sure. It's uh, totally shareable. So, but it's more of a guide. I'm mostly a in-product guy, you know, but the, I think some of the slides will be helpful. So three versions of QuickBooks Online. Now, I, some of you guys might already be advanced users of QBO, so I, I need to kind of talk to the whole audience, and I want to be fair to the people who are just not used to QuickBooks Online. The, my goal is that you come away with some good consulting tips and understand the platform so that you're better able to talk about it with your clients, right? So, no, so it's not something overwhelming or you're just not sure about, right? Trying to demystify QBO. That's really my goal. So three levels. You know how you like have desktop. You got Pro and then you got Premier and all the different SKUs and QuickBooks Enterprise and we have QuickBooks Mac. For QBO, it's just three levels. Simple Start Essentials and Plus. One, three, and five users. If you need up to 25 users, you'd, you'd go to Plus and there's a way to pay for up to 25 users of QuickBooks Online. And there's different features in all, and we'll go over that. Um, but notice, each SKU has two accountant users. The, these accountant users do not count against the user list at all. Um, as, and as a matter of fact, when you accept the invite, you'll be routed in through QuickBooks Online Accountant, which I'm going to show at the, in the last 15 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes of the presentation, to show really the accountant lens and their access. It's like a portal, QuickBooks Online Accountant. Um, and I'll explain why. You know, there's two accountant users, but you really only need one because in QBOA, the accountant's view, I'll be able to invite all my staff, and we can all work off one list. I mean, it's really going to become more of a firm management tool soon, but right now it's a client management and staff management tool with all things QuickBooks Online. So we'll end there because that's really the last thing I want to be impressed upon as we go out at the end of this presentation. 
So accountants don't cost anything against the active user list. And in this version, Essentials is the most popular, followed closely by Plus, and then Simple Start. We just reduced the retail price on QBO2. Uh, so retail, Plus is 30 bucks a month. Essentials is 19.99, so we'll say 20. And then Simple Start is 10. Right, so we dropped it 10, 7, and 3, respectively, from the current retail. And when we get to the wholesale billing, I mean, plus you can get for 15 bucks a month for, for the life, and that's five users, plus full ARAP and all this other stuff that Plus has. It's a good segue. So when to choose Plus over Essentials, right? And then I'll get to my desktop slide. You have clients, and you're used to having them do class tracking in Pro and Premier, right? Or even Enterprise, even Mac has that. So if they're coming over to QuickBooks Online, they need plus. If they need class and location tracking, and I'll show you the, the difference between the two of those. There's actually two types of class tracking in QuickBooks Online. Location's great for balance sheet by location. So that's, that's always exciting to point out. I'll, show, the, I'll um, show you what I mean. And then if they need purchase orders or two-sided items, so they want, an, they want the item tab on uh, or the item section on a cost form like an expense, credit card expense, bill, check, right? And they also want to have that same item hitting revenue, too, when they go to a sales receipt or an invoice or they're passing something through or on an estimate. You have two-sided items. If they need that, or some of you guys might call it double-sided items, right? That term should be familiar to you. That would be a uh, plus as well. Of course, 1099s, if you want to pass stuff through, time, time expense, or material to an invoice, you want, you want plus. Uh, and then budgets, the, the budget tool, and you can do, by the way, multiple budgets per fiscal year. That's in QuickBooks Online Plus. And then, like I said, five users. So this is where Plus would come into play. And um, I'll show you from QBOA, there's a great comparison uh, spreadsheet, uh, not a spreadsheet, great comparison website. When you're creating a client file from QBOA, it's a resource for you guys. I'll show you Quikipedia, all this stuff that you'll need. So you might not know that someone might want essentials, but they also want class tracking. Well, they can't be on essentials. They have to be on Plus. Okay. Now, what about when really the client needs to stay on desktop? And this is, I'll show a few things in desktop uh, that equate to QBO, but what about, you know, when they, when they need to stay inside of uh, QuickBooks desktop? Now, a few of the, your, your business development managers are on this call too, and they would just, remember the ecosystem, there's a lot of apps that will solve for what QBO does not yet. But this, is, this slide is just taking where someone doesn't want to invest in a third-party app. They're just considering QBO or, say, Premier Manufacturing Wholesale, and what would they not have? Just canned out of the box, okay, without a workaround or anything like that. It's important to know. So pretty much the heavier inventory stuff, um, the sales order, tracking current availability, like, you know, what are you going to promise to uh, a customer? versus what you have, that type of visibility. Group items, build assemblies, and price levels, either fixed percent or by item. Those are all in Pro and Premier and Enterprise, and even Mac has some of those, but not in QuickBooks Online yet. Let me qualify it that I do have a bit on Lettuce in this slide. Lettuce, it, Lettuce is an order management, inventory management software, web-based software, and we purchased Lettuce about, uh, what is it, nine months ago now? We're building that in as our inventory um, module. I'm not sure if it'll just be in plus, or will it be in essentials of plus, or features of each, or whatever. I don't have that visibility yet. But at the end, by the end of this fiscal year, you'll ha all of this stuff will be answered as far as inventory, sales orders, unit of measure, build assembly, things like that. The heavier job costing needs, like estimate the actual reporting, because QBO Plus can pass through time, time expense, and material. I, I can run a profit and loss by sub customer, which equates to a P and L by job. But a labor burden type estimate to actual reporting, though there is a well-known workaround by Stacy Kildall, and, and I'll show you where you can find out more about that. Um, that's going to be in, you know, the probably fiscal year 16. So it is my contention as you look at this short list, and it used to be two slides, you know, back in the day. Now it's a very small slide of what's not in there. Um, QBO Plus will be very similar to Premier, I'm going to say, in like 18 months, you know, maybe two years tops. Now it's more akin to Pro and then a little bit Premier, and it has its own advantages on its own. But it's important to, to know that, that we're investing heavily in QuickBooks Online, and so we're going to have it feature rich as like, say, Premier, and that's the goal. Okay? Um, so 
and a quick argument on, on most of your QBO Pro clients can move to QBO, uh, assuming they don't need a group item, right, or a fixed percent price level. Um, the, if you look at the bottom section, QBO Plus matches Pro and Mac on, you know, typical ARAP, sales tax, online banking. You can reconcile your bank. It's got registers, customer vendor tracking, reporting, and some of this stuff I'm going to show you in product. We, it has, you can turn payroll on as well as the online payments, right, where you send a, you can automatically send an invoice to a client, uh, I mean your client's customer or they can. They click pay now and then they put in ACH or a credit card. And then the invoice is taken care of. So uh, two-sided items again, some pass-through time and expense, journal entry, double entry, accounting. It's got the control Y report, right, the transaction journal. Uh, a light inventory tracking for now, more on that later. Sales tax, you can even do group rates, really we call them combined rates. And then they have recurring transactions and memorized reports, so we don't really call them memorized reports, we call them my custom reports. But the, that, all those are very relatable to what you know in, in Pro and even Premier. And you can customize forms now too, I'll make sure I show you that. So you have clients on Pro that don't need any of this last slide, and by the way, Pro doesn't do a lot of that, doesn't do sales orders either or assemblies, but they don't need, say, the progress billing or heavy labor costing or price levels or group items. You can just move them on to QuickBooks Online right now and decide whether it's Essentials or Plus. Okay? So that's important. And then the stuff I am going to go in is in gold. We're going to talk about why Chrome, tips and tricks. Um, we're going to look at you know, an AR flow, we'll talk about recurring transactions and in in, uh, invoice automation. Uh, we'll look at reports, customizing them, and how to send reports automatically. Uh, journal entry, yes, I'll just show you one I did earlier today. You can do multiple ARAP per journal entry, which is pretty exciting for desktop users, because you can't do that there. So accountants always like that one. I just wanted you to see it for real, because it's almost like you don't believe it, but it's true. And then uh, we'll do the online banking. Um, we'll look at the audit log report. So there's a few things we're going to look at that I typically do on a, on a much longer presentation for large firms, but I've, I have to streamline it to make sure you guys can, you know, get on with your day, et cetera. So, and then I'll land in the QBOA, the QuickBooks Online Accountant. At the end of the presentation, we're going to be talking about the accountant's lens in your platform. Okay, and then we'll come back and do, and just give you a few tips on converting from desktop. All right, so let me share out finally. And um, just, uh, it, again, if you can, you guys can shoot me a chat or something uh, if you want. I'll see it. I'm shared out now. I wanted to make sure everybody knows where my website is for, for short videos. QuickBooks Product Videos dot homestead dot com. All right. And, and, and uh, there, this is, the site is about four years old now, and there's a lot of short videos here. Okay, um, the, I'm going to put a lot in QBO, you know, this is where I'm, most of my videos are doing here. I mean, the QB accountant tools, QuickBooks for your client, that would be all desktop short videos, but if you want to, you know, dive in and see some short videos on QBO or share it with your client, that's fine too. You can go ahead and, uh, and do that. And, uh, you know, I have every, a lot of different stuff here. I mean, it's, you know, it's just very utilitarian, but I got a lot of stuff. So you can use that. And also, um, I'll make sure that uh, you guys get a couple other job aids, which will be helpful. They're Google Docs, and you'll have access just to view them, and you'll see all the recent updates. That's why they're, they'll be helpful to you. But things like uh, converting from desktop to QBO, and how do things go over? Why? And where does it end up? You know, for instance, how does a group item go over? You know, how does it look like on the, on the actual invoice, et cetera? So this is like an updated of the old KB article for this. And then... Also, another one is the QBO versus desktop and Essentials versus plus one page or cheat sheet. So I'll try to give you guys that um, and so that you can make a call while you're talking to a client on the phone, whatever makes it easier to you. Um, yeah, what I'm going to do is, is I'll put the links into the, at the end of presentation, I'll put the links into the chat area in the, in the WebEx so you guys have it. And I'll, so there's really three links, two Google Docs, and then this QuickBooks product videos .com. Okay, cool. So we are in QuickBooks Online now, and thank you for your patience there. We'll be in here for the next uh, four, uh, 
50 minutes or so. And I don't know, uh, varying degree, sure, Ray, varying degree of, um, you know, quick QBO usage, if you use the old QBO, if you're used to QuickBooks desktop, things like that. But really, and, and this is more about navigating and why I think Chrome is best for QuickBooks Online and some tips and tricks. There's three areas of QuickBooks Online. I mean, the home page is the home page. So I have, you know, a, a progress bar. And there's a, a couple windows that have the same theme. You know, open invoices, overdue. If I click on this, it'll bring me the sales transaction window. I'll show you that later. Here's the expenses, right? And you can drill into a report here. Um, I can change the date range on these and just look at particular, if I want, this year maybe. And then my profit and loss. Um, here would be my bank accounts or, or other asset accounts that I can uh, typically, yeah, it's credit card and bank accounts and see their balances here. If I'm in a public location, there's a private mode. This is not a company-wide setting. It's just for that user on that computer, you know, iPad, laptop, they just don't want someone to see the balances you have, right? So there's that. Doesn't turn it on for everybody in the file, right? Just wanted to point that. But that little pri private mode, I think we call it Starbucks mode. And here's where you connect an account to a bank. I'll be showing the online banking and bank rules in a sample file a little later on. So you have the home page. And then there will be messages and tasks. Typically there are in this page, you'll see like an activity feed on the lower right. Then you have the left navigation panel. So I have customers. And again, this kind of thematic progress bar for customers, vendors, and transactions. I can see, filter the customers that have open estimates, and then drill on the customer from there. Anybody with unbilled activity or open invoices, overdue, and then what's been paid. You know? And then when I drill on to, into a particular uh, client, and if I yeah, clear the filter view, yeah, drill into Amy here, it's really like a customer center that you'd be used to in the desktop. Um, where I have, you know, parent-child relationship. I have customer, then I have the job. It's really a sub-customer. Customer, job, job, job. And we just call it sub-customer. If I were to click this and edit, you know, and what I like the customer center is when I click on the customer, you can just view their transactions. Before, it would, it would just take you to that individual customer center. You have to go back to the list, go to another customer. So we're changing kind of that workflow as well. And that, that change is new. More like a true customer center you guys would be used to in the desktop. And when I edit particular, this particular customer field, see, we don't call it job, but it's the same thing. It's very relatable. So you can track your customer jobs, if you will, or do a P&L by job or sub-customer, and you can choose to bill with parent or not. And this is just typical information that you're going to show on a customer record. Vendor would be very similar. I can also do new transactions from here. There's two or three ways to do transactions, so I'm just going to point them out. New transaction, obviously, here. These would be the sales type transactions. And yes, you can do time weekly timesheet or time or single time activity. And I'll show you that too because I'm going to I'm going to do a workflow and put in some like non-posting stuff and then go to an invoice, receive a payment and talk about undeposited funds. For vendors, you know, I got open purchase orders, bills overdue, same kind of thing. Uh, tra tra payroll is an add-on, you pay for that. Um, but it's QuickBooks Online Payroll, but it's integrated in the inside of the file. QBO also works with full service payroll now, and if you anybody has into an online payroll for accountants, that can export to QBO, desktop, Mac, all of them, right? So if any of you have that, uh, the it, you know you do the payroll and the Intuit Online Payroll, but then you export the checks over into QuickBooks Online. Transactions tab. This would be the online banking sales transactions. Again, this is kind of the customer transactional dashboard, if you will, where they can, again, create transactions and see and filter the list. And every list is going to have this action of the next logical step in the workflow. So if I have an open invoice, I'm going to click Receive Payment. It'll bring me to the Receive Payment window. Expenses as well. This is where the uh, you know expense dashboard, if you will. And then chart of accounts are, are registers. Right? In, in a register, you can double click on it, go to the register. It's going to look like a register. Right? So that uh, looks very similar to the desktop register, if you will. And then taxes will go down. You have sales tax. And I just wanted to show you guys, we've really done a lot to the sales tax module. It used to be, for those that are used to the old QBO, just one rate and a preference. You know? So now you can actually do combined rates and multiple rates and has a sales tax liability report, things like that. So sales tax, very similar to how it behaves in the desktop, is now in QuickBooks Online also. Now, I want to open up 
I should have had this open already. I'm going to go ahead and open up Lyft Desktop Open, um, and we'll go through a few other things. So you have the the left hand uh, panel. Oh, let me just get the file up in there, right? Very outlookable, if you will. I'm going to go back to the home page, and then you have the second point of access. Even before we get to the Google Chrome tricks, just overview of QBO. You have this plus sign in the up the upper right. Spinny Plus, Quick Create, whatever you want to call it. All the forms transactions, customer, vendor, employee, other, like journal entry or bank deposit, are all going to be under this quick create icon at the top. Here's your like advanced search, which you can search by transactions, as well as you can add your own filters if you want, or just do a general search, and it's going to just bring up basically a list report of all transactions, right, for the last 365 days. The clock icon are the are the transactions, the recent transactions. About the last 10 to 12 have been done, and you can go ahead and click more to get to a report as well. So again, left panel, plus sign at the top, and then company operations is the gear icon on the upper right. This is where you'll get to manage users. Um, this is where you'll go to reconcile or budget or the audit log report. Here's the item list. We call it the products and services. Here's recurring transactions. Here's your chart of accounts, preferences. Call it company settings. So it's really three areas, including that home page, or plus the home page, which is just the landing page. You have left, top, center, and right. If it's not in any of those three areas, it's not in QBO yet. Okay. However, in your QuickBooks desktop lives, you guys are used to a few things. I'm going to show you how you can make it relatable. Open window list, top icon bar, right? Um, and that's what we're going to talk about now. And then we'll go through a bank rec, very similar, and, and we'll do the customer AR flow, online banking. Yep, okay, we're right on, right on time here. So if you have clients coming over from Pro or Premier, uh, new clients is not going to matter, but if someone, even yourself, might be used to desktop, you've been working at it all morning, now you're going to work on a few QBO clients for the rest of the day. So make, create yourself a top icon bar, okay? Let me go ahead and minimize my desktop, and this is what I've done here. But how, how did I do that? Because I want to be one, one click away. If I want to write a check, I just want to click on write check and have that window open, or maybe I want to go to the register or make deposit window or journal entry. And what, what I basically did is I click on the little animal and up on the left, I've created a Chrome user, right? A Chrome user um, specific for QuickBooks Online so that I could have a blank bookmarks bar to create this quote unquote top icon bar. Because right? I'm just using Chrome feature in order to create a workflow that was similar, a navigation workflow that was similar to me in my desktop life. So it's really easy to add a user. And the first time you come into Chrome for you guys, you're not going to have this list here. You might not even have like a little icon in the upper left where I can just go and create a new user. I'll show you how you create one. And I do suggest, depending on how many QBO company files you think you need to be in throughout the day, I do suggest to create a couple three Chrome users. And you do that by clicking the three lines in the upper right, Customize and Control Google Chrome. And then I go down to Settings. And then go down to People, right? Now I have an absurd amount because I do QA testing and things like that. And I usually, every webinar, I usually create a new one. But you'll only need a couple three. And why is because I use Chrome for other things. If I go to another Chrome user, see where I showed you my Google Drive and my... Uh, uh, my website, all these are my daily things that I go to, you know, to support my own job. I'm not going to use this for QBO because I don't want to put a check up here in a journal entry. It's just going to be too confusing. So create a separate user just for QuickBooks Online. And it's just as easy as, as, easy as add a person, call it QBO, and then that's it. And then you got it. You got the new person. And what that will do is when you go to that new person, it'll open up a new instance of Chrome and you'll have a blank bookmarks bar. So when you go into QuickBooks Online, right, this is all clear, this bookmarks bar. Let me show you. I'm going to take it away and put it back so you guys get what I mean. Right? You can show the bookmarks bar. And this is a bookmarks bar where I'm going to see I have all this room 
to put the bookmarks of things that I go to in QBO daily. And it even works in different QBO company files you're in. So that's what I've done. Um, let's delete purchase order. And I'm going to go to the plus sign and we'll go to a yeah, vendor credit. Let's say a, your client does a lot of vendor credits. As soon as you have the form or the list of the report up, whatever they go to, just like you're building, you're customizing your top icon bar and desktop, whatever they go to daily and they, need, they want to be one click away, right? They don't want to remember that reconciles under the gear icon or, you know, uh, I can do an invoice from the plus sign. They just want to see invoice and click it. You click the star, call it what you want. We'll just call it a bill credit. And then bookmarks bar, done. And that's what I have up there. It's now a bill credit. So then I can just click on it and, and go there. So when I go to, I can go to enter bills, or I can go back to vendor credit, and I'm one click away, right? Or maybe I want to be on a register. I'm going to go to the check register real quick. Just one click away from this stuff. And I also need to do, now let's go do a reconciliation. So let's talk, so that was the bookmarks bar. Second tip, let's talk about multiple tabs, creating your open window list, right? So you have, you know, in desktop, and I'm in desktop right now, I have these windows open. I'm going to want to reconcile, and then let's say I also want a, uh, you know, my register report, okay? So I got open windows. So I'm trying to equate this to, to make an open window list, if you will. It's really an open tabs list. So in QuickBooks Online, what you're going to do is right-click on the tab you're on to start and choose Duplicate. And this is going to bring me to, right, the register. It's going to duplicate the prior tab, but I'm still in the QBO file, right? They're identical. So now I can go ahead and click, go to the gear icon, Reconcile. And then maybe I also want a report up something like that. So I'm going to right click, duplicate, it'll bring up the reconcile window. And now perhaps I can just go to reports and look at maybe a, a reconcile report or something like that. We'll just run that. And the nice thing about this is um, you can take the tab and move it to another monitor. So this will work great. Another example I could have done is a balance sheet and a P&L or maybe a trial balance. So you guys have two or three monitors, I know. I'm using two, you probably have three. So what's nice that QBO has versus the desktop is I can peel the tabs off and put them in a different monitor when I'm comparing things. So the multiple tab thing is, is key there. And, and what I like is you can move them around, right, to different places, which I also find uh, very helpful, uh, depending on the order you want it in. Now, before we get to uh, – well, and let me, talk, let me say one more Chrome tip, and then we'll go to bank rec because it's – it's very similar to how you do it in desktop, and that's a backbone of QuickBooks in general, so you're going to want to see that. Okay, with the multiple tabs, notice that I have another tab up in QBOA that I'm going to go to later today and show you. I'm going to end with this in about, you know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes we'll be in here. Um, I'm, in a, I'm, on, I'm using the Martini Glass Chrome user, right? So I can go into a totally different file, or I can go in as the account user or just go into a different file using multiple users of Chrome. So I could even be in the same, I could even be logged into QBO with the same login and have four or five files open, as long as I have four or five users of Chrome. So now I'm in this data file, and you could do intercompany transfer maybe, copy paste, or just view this file like, like multiple entities for one company perhaps. That's another good example. Um, so that's another benefit of Chrome. One would be the duplicate tabs, though I believe Firefox and IE can do that too. I just find it easier with Chrome because it's a right-click duplicate. Uh, and then the top icon bar. And then, of course, ha having multiple Chrome instances, you can be in multiple QuickBooks Online files even with the same login. Okay, good stuff there. And uh, by the way, this is the list we're kind of going over. So Google Chrome efficiency, multiple tabs, and we'll, we'll get on to some other stuff, automation stuff. But first, I like hitting on bank reconciliation because I know it's a, a backbone in desktop. And in desktop, right, you guys are, let me uh, close that. Yeah, so we're on the reconcile window. And it's, you know, you have the high transactions after statement date. That's always important, right? The modify area is over here, but I can go ahead and make a, recon a reconcile and, and et cetera. So very similar on, on QuickBooks Online. 
except what I do like about QBO, that's an advantage over the desktop, is though Premier will have those prior month reports, I don't have to open those reports to see changes or auto adjustments in QuickBooks Online. When I go to reconcile, I'm brought to the reconciliation history and reports window. It's just a grid. It shows me the changes. I can drill down and see why there's a change of a negative 168.92. The dude voided the local gas and electric company and then also increased an in expense to Vicki King, I think is a sub C. So the total amount of the change, right, is uh, 168.92. So I know I can go ahead and replace that check, and I can, you know, either ask them about the Vicky King check just by looking at it without having to run a report. Okay. Now I can I can build a discrepancy report. QBO doesn't have a specific reconcile discrepancy report. This is the report. This window. When I drill in on the actual statement, it'll bring me to the the that kind of static PDF report that you get in desktop you guys might be used to. It doesn't show the changes after it was cleared. Okay, keep losing. Oh, sorry, Donna. Um, oh, glad you're here, though. It's good to see your name again. Yeah, the uh, it's been a while. Hope you're well. My volume, that could be the buffering, right, Internet buffering, so hang in there with the volume. Um, yeah, I've never really been accused as a low talker, of course, as those of you know me, but um, – uh, I know with the internet buffering it's tough, and, and I am recording it, so I'll absolutely make sure Natasha and I will make sure, and by the way, Natasha Gorman's on here, and so is Dave Bergstein, so they're both on, and maybe Todd Robinson as well. We'll make sure that you guys get um, these links that I'm talking about, and they'll, they'll keep me true to my word on, on making sure you guys get these supporting things to help you. But yeah, the recording will be one of it. I should have it by the end of today. Thanks for that. But there's a static report like the PDF one in desktop for reconciliation. You can build a discrepancy report though. And all you do is you go to all reports, you bet. And then I'm going to go to account and reports and you do the transaction list by date. And this is building a, a, a discrepancy report. Keep in mind, I don't see where you're going to need one because that reconciled grid itself is a discrepancy report. It shows changes in auto adjustments. But in the off chance you need it, what you do is you go down to match on the transaction list by date, and in the memo field you type reconcile adjustment. And then when you run the report, um, it'll show, my, I won't have any, but it would show, you know, when they actually, that it, when, you know, in desktop when your user, when your clients can just force the rec, we don't want them to, but they force the rec and then there's this adjustment of whatever. Sometimes large amounts, sometimes small amounts, but it's either way, it's tough. So I can do the same thing. It, it, it puts a reconcile adjustment in the memo field on the adjustment because they can do that in QBO too. So you could run a, a, reckon, a, a discrepancy report if you want. But my thing really is the, the reconcile grid itself, you know, is its own report to show changes in auto adjustments. And then when you go to reconcile, it's uh, very similar, right? High transactions to after the statement date. The only difference is we kind of move the modify over here. So reconciliation, uh, very similar to your desktop uh, lives. Okay, let's go through some automation features. Typically around sales, we'll do a customer workflow. The bill is just entering bills, pay bills, using the expense form. I'm probably not going to show much of that, um, but I want to get to the, the more automated features of QuickBooks Online, and that's regarding invoices. And then um, we'll look at reports, customizing them. I want to show you the management report tool, which is brand new, and then um, I'll make sure I have that up already. That's going into product in a couple, in about two weeks for report pre pre presentability, so I want to make sure I show you that, and then we'll go over a few things and dive into QBOA. Okay, typical workflow for a customer, and I like using it from transaction sales because that's kind of my customer transactional dashboard, and as you can see where we're going symbiotically with desktop, if I were to do this, Hopefully you guys will see where we're going. And even Mac is starting to look like it. Where do you suppose desktop got this idea from? Right, so it borrowed from QBO. And, you know, we're, if, if I kind of blow it up, you can see, I think, where we're trying to go. I mean, we're trying to, we don't want to confuse you guys. I think we're going to make it more symbiotic and just take some of those other features that I mentioned that aren't in QBO and put them into QuickBooks Online Plus, let's say, to make it a true premier product. So then for you, it's just, you know, 
uh, not really a non-decision on what your client can go to. You know, there'd be something super specific and granular that they'd have to stay on desktop, you know. Maybe they just don't want the, the data on the cloud. You know, I don't know. It's on our servers, though. It's just as safe as online banking. We have 20% of the GDP for the U.S. goes to our servers. So it's, it's quite uh, machine gun proof, if you will. So I'm on the transactional dashboard. Let's start with a, uh, one of my favorite forms, and it's in Essentials and Plus. Desktop doesn't have it. It's called the delayed charge. And this is a non-posting sales transaction. I'm just going to hold the charge to, you know, invoice the client later on. So we'll talk about, um, let's see here, we'll do, let's do the Bergstein family. It's always a fun one. Choose the, choose the date that I did it. We'll do it today. We'll talk about customization of documents, too. And this is just non-posting. It's, it's just not going to debit or credit anything yet. Right? It's just holding the charge for later. Let's talk about class and location tracking. As you guys notice, location is up here, right? Two different types of class tracking in QuickBooks Online. And I'll show you that. Let's go ahead and duplicate. We'll go to preferences real quick. I'll show some key preferences. We're not going to spend tons of time in there. But click gear icon, company settings. And then you'll have um, categories. And by that, I, I know we're thinking accounts, but really we mean classes or locations, okay? So um, track classes, you have to be in plus, or track location. Class would be at the, you know, kind of line item detail of the invoice. And then location is the summary of the transaction. The, the whole amount of the check, the whole amount of the bill, the whole amount of the um, invoice or sales receipt. And what's nice about that is because it's in the top part of transactions, the source area, then you can do a balance sheet by location and get a much truer quote unquote balance sheet by class report than you ever could in desktop. And we tried that report in 2011 desktop and it failed. We never went back to it. It's just too hard because all the balance sheet accounts are all over the place in the source and target rules. So QBO has uh, that balance sheet by location is really nice and the location feature, um, you know, that's why a lot of nonprofits use QuickBooks Online as well because of, because of being mobile and stuff and everybody dialing in from different places. But I can track the program as a location, right, or the state as a location and the program as a class and then use items for the events and accounts for, you know, et cetera. So uh, I really like that, that part there. And also another couple things to show on the sales side, because I'm going to kind of do this whole job costing pass through automated flow to the make deposit and we'll talk on deposit of funds. The automation here, when you click on advanced in the settings, there's some important things to point out because I just don't want to come back here. Um, the automatically invoice on build activity and automatically apply credits and automatically apply bill credits to bills. Make sure your client is up for that level of automation. If they want to control what time material expense goes to an invoice or what credit memos go to an invoice, don't turn these on, right, because we're just going to apply it for them. Some clients will handle that and they'll want that. Some won't. But it's important to have that because this is stuff desktop uh, does not do. It doesn't autom automatically apply the credit. There's a the pop-up there. And it certainly doesn't automatically create an invoice for unbilled activity. Right? Doesn't auto send invoices. Doesn't auto send reports. So just make sure that your client's up for that kind of thing. Talking about light job costing, I don't mean true estimate to actual reporting. That'll be in there eventually, but I mean just passing stuff through. This expenses setting is important too. Make sure you turn on show items table on expense and purchase forms. Got to be in plus. That's because plus supports two sided items. That's why this setting is here. Track expenses and items by customer. Got to be a plus. Okay. And that's particularly if you're doing a P&L by job or sub-customer. And then uh, make expenses items billable. One thing I like to point out, the markup, we're used to it on the desktop side being at the point of creating the invoice. In QBO, it's done on the cost side, but the same result. Okay. And then, of course, advance will have your closing date, and you got a bunch of other settings there you guys can get to on your own. But those are key. All right. I'm going to do uh, – I have the uh, – let me go back to the delay charge. And I'm going to save and close this charge. Now, you'll notice some unbilled activity I have for Dave. And I wanted to mention with the multiple tabs, you've got to refresh the tab, at least for now. 
Okay, so that would be one thing. Uh, you know, if you have a report open and register and stuff, and you and somebody enters a check, but you have the report. In order for the report to pick up that check or journal entry adjustment, click the re click the re reload the page. Okay, it's important to know. Um, so I have six hundred fifty dollars worth of charges. I can go ahead and now start the invoice uh, for Dave. Now, what about time? I get asked about time and billing a lot. Let's do a single time activity for the Bergstein family as well. You can do a weekly timesheet. That's there. It's, it looks a lot like the weekly time. Well, it doesn't look like it, but it behaves the same, right? It has a billable box, put in notes, uh, things like that. I can tag a class. I can, I can tag a location. Desktop doesn't have location tracking. But I'm just going to do a, a single time entry. Employees, single time entry, just like very similar to the one in desktop. And then I'm going to choose class. Uh, yeah, location will, uh, let's do this one too, and then class will be, I did some support for him, let's say, right? And then I choose the customer or the sub-customer, which would be quote-unquote job. Telephone support, choose to make it billable or not. If it's just going to a report, just, you know, don't check off billable. But assuming, you know, it's, 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 you're going to pass it through, then do that. You can enter start and end times. Again, you don't see a clock here. There's not one. So that's when you want to hook up a third party and leverage that. Ask, ask David and Natasha about that. T-Sheets is awesome, right? GPS tracking on the phone. So, but these are, this equates to time entry you do in desktop. And I'll say it was like four hours, and you can put in your, your uh, description, whatever, and I can go ahead and just save the time entry. So now I should have a little bit more non-posting stuff that's tagged to that job. Yeah, 770 right now, right? So I can go ahead and start the invoice. Before I start the invoice here, and again, these action columns are great. What's the next logical step in the workflow? I want to go ahead, and I'm just going to pretend I'm a, a customer and a user to QBO. I got some time set up against a, a customer, but I'm going to go to create the invoice. And when I choose his name, watch on the right. A drawer is going to open up. It's going to remind me not to forget, right, this, that I can add the billable time and I can add the, the charge there. And it brings over all the class and location ta uh, that, I, that were tagged and the quantities, et cetera. Here's three custom fields. Right? So I have the ability, I'm going to save this invoice now. That's debit, AR, and credits revenue. Now it's posting. Three custom fields on a sales form right now. Let's talk about customizing. We just enhanced this. I'm going to click Edit Current Style. Remember this bar down below. We're going to talk about the Control Y report. That would be under More. Or you want to make it recurring. We'll go there next. But let me go to Edit the Current. And you'll see that I can do now a template per customer or per something that I want to do with its own logo. I can choose the template that I want, upload the logo. I can choose the appropriate header fields, including the three customs. We'll add more later, I'm sure, but now it's three. I can go look at the columns and change order. And the More tab, I could even do things like show an account summary. This could be like an invoice slash statement, which is kind of cool, or group activity by type which would be item or day, week, or month. So things like that. You create your own templates per customer now. It used to just be kind of different templates, but you couldn't add a new logo or something, right? So now you can do that, and when you go to customize, you just choose the template you want, and that's one that's going to print out for you. you know? um, and then the More tab. Let me click Save. The More tab. This is where the Control Y is, right? Copy, Void, Delete. Where is that stuff? I can't find it. It's under the More tab on Transactions. Check, Bill will show the same thing. And here's the famous Jason Tamacta report. You guys might all know Jason, some of you. Anyway, he was on the first QB support team back in 92 when Snoopy came out, DOS 1. He created, he created the Control Y report. Right? I told him he should get a T-shirt. Right? I'm the Control Y guy. It's just brilliant. And this is what you guys are always looking for. So click More in Transaction Report. This is the Control Y. What was debited? what was credited behind the transaction, okay? So good stuff there. All right, let's go to um, recurring transactions. Oh, I wanted to finish the flow. Sorry. Receive payment because I want to talk undeposited funds. Let's go to desktop real quick. Edit preferences. There is a preference, as you guys know, for undeposited funds, default. Right? Group the payments together into one deposit like you do in real life. You can do the same thing. It's no setting, though, in QBO. It's just on a sales receipt or the receive payment window. The deposit to what? If it goes to checking, it's going to put it in checking. Right? If you see a lot of singular payment deposits into checking, you know they're not going on to positive funds. So look for that. It's sticky. So once I have this 1499 account, uh, it's always going to choose it the next time.
So I'm going to choose Dave here. It has the invoice and choose payment method, check it off, save and close. And then when I go to the plus sign, bank deposit, or I could choose it from the top icon bar, create a one-click icon bar for your clients so I don't have to remember where stuff is. I mean, three areas. They're eventually going to learn it, but they're used to one way. So try to equate it to what they were used to. New users to QuickBooks, no big deal. But I still like the top icon bar because everybody likes one-click access. Okay, so I can choose a location for the payment. I'll say this was Texas. Here's my payment or other payments, and then I can just click Save and Close. This is going to credit undeposited funds, debit checking. And there ends the AR flow, right? And then an AP, similar. I mean, you can go to Pay Bills. This is where you pay multiple bills from, this screen, right? Or you can also do it from Transactions Expenses. Okay, look at the action column, make a payment, right? So a couple ways to do that, and, and but I, I like the pay bills screen. We're going to be enhancing that feature uh, too as we come. Okay, recurring transactions. Click on the gear icon under list recurring transactions. You're used to memorized transactions. They do not convert from desktop. You might have a bunch of memorized reports and memorized transactions in the desktop file. When you convert to QBO, those will not be there, so you'll recreate them. Um, so, and I'll go over memorized reports in a second, QBO. But let me pick on an invoice here because so there's some things in QBO that it does where desktop won't. We're going to do an invoice here. Uh, create the interval, choose the template, very similar to how desktop does it, except I can choose to automatically send emails. Also sales receipts. You can set up recurring charges once, include any unbilled charge, forget about it. Just let it go and QBO will do the data entry and also send the transaction to the customer who then if you turn QuickBooks payments on in settings there'll be a pay now button in the email. So the customer can go in and do either banking routing or credit card. So you, all you've done is set up the recurring template and then QBO takes care of the invoice, the payment coming in, and then you just go, and then the deposit to checking, right? It, that, that scenario bypasses undeposited funds, obviously, because it's already paid through QuickBooks payments, the online payments. So, and you can even choose days to, in advance to enter if you want. You can do this for checks, bills, rent, whatever you want. I mean, we, we support most transaction types. And even on the customer center now, when you go into a customer, I believe you can see the... There should be a way to see the, well, I won't show a filter, maybe it is, all transactions. Here you go, recurring templates. So you can, you know, look at the recurring templates a customer might have. That was just added in, a, I think, a, a release ago or so. We do release it in QBO every four weeks. Okay, so customers, vendors, auto send. Let's go to reports real quick. <clears throat> One of my favorite reports, and you had it in the desktop. I loved it there, too. Transaction detail by account. You can customize reports a lot, like just people. A lot of people don't know how you can do it. Let's do this quarter, and then it just is different. Now there's more columns you can add in desktop, and there's more things you can filter by, but I can still do similar report customization and save those customizations. I'm going to leave it as it is for now, but I'm and I'm going to group by account. Um, let me try transaction type instead, and I'm going to go to lists and choose the distribution account, which is the target account, is going to be undeposited funds. Maybe I should have done it by account. I think I should have. <clears throat> Let's see here. You can do like a, a payments deposit and undeposited funds account uh, report if you want. Let me go back up, and then this will be by account and run the report. And you can filter by multiple uh, you know, transaction types and things like that. So this is great for like vendor reports, if you want to show a total by vendor for a particular vendor account, things like that. And once you've done your customizations, you save the customizations, name the account, add it to a group, name the report I should say, add it to a group, you know, we'll say accountant. You can share it with other users. I won't be able to go back to memorize transactions. Um, and then, so I have that in the re in the report right now. I click, sorry about that. I click reports, I go to my custom reports, and then I have, you know, this transaction payment. Then I can highlight the actual group, click edit, and now I can schedule when this report will go out. And QBO, not through my email, auto, it will just send out 
um, reports right from here. So, uh, and you can choose who it's going to go to, et cetera. And it just comes as an HTML format. I have a bunch that are locked in I get every morning. You know, sales reports, any kind of operational report that you want within QBO, you can go ahead and send. Um, so that's the memorized report. So auto-sending reports, auto-sending forms of going over class location tracking, um, the online banking, and then we got to go into QBOA. Okay, real quick, let's do a, a check. We'll say it's a, a bill for rent because memorized transaction. Let me Let me... Leave no one who's going to feel like they, they missed out on anything. I'm going to do um, data storage company. It's for, I pay it every month. It's like a, you know, due subscription. There you go. And it's 700 bucks for some storage they're doing. And I'm not going to class it or, or anything like that. You click Make Recurring. Once you have all your line item details or the account item, remember to get the item details section, you got to be in plus two-sided items, but it's, I'm just going to have this account, and it's easy to add lines to the account section or remove them if you want, and then you click make recurring, and then, so this would be, you know, monthly rent scheduled. I'm going to choose five days in advance, to, to, to in advance but it's still going to be the first of the month on the transaction, right? Just when did it get in there? And you choose the start date, and we'll start January 1st and there's no end date, and it's due on receipt, put in the bill number, and then save the template. And now on the first, well, five days before the first, um, this bill is going to be entered. And that is how you uh, do a memorized transaction. And now it's added to the list, right? So I go to recurring transactions, and I'll see the bill here. You know, there it is. Just created. So memorize transactions. There's also videos on my site on, on how to do this too, but thanks for the question. Um, and then lastly, I love this one. Uh, let me go to the, this one. Let's see. Do I have one journal entry? Yes. What is unique about this journal entry versus a similar one in desktop? So I have two ARs and one AP, and I didn't get an error. How about that? So multiple AR AP per journal entry. I always like to show that to this audience, because you guys do journal entries uh, more than, say, your clients would. So you can just do, I mean, you want to do a bill and an invoice, obviously, for the, the sales reporting, but at the end of the period, right, you're going to still do make a, adjustments to AR and AP via journal entry. So it's nice to be able to do it on one journal entry instead of saving new, saving new, saving new. Okay, and you can even make journal entries recurring as well. Notice below. Okay, and... Uh, that's where you delete, audit history, okay. So, online banking, key. Now let me go into the sample file, this, the QBOA, and then we'll, we'll come back here. When in from the new QBOA, under the gear icon, sample company. It's going to bring you in a sample file. It's a great sandbox. Um, and we got about 15 minutes to go. I do appreciate your guys' uh, patience here. Feel free to ask more questions. Um, so, we rolled out the new QuickBooks Online accountant, but the sample company's file has been around forever. It's a landscaping service, um, and you guys can use it. It just resets itself every time, right? So if you put in a bunch of data, you're not going to see it there when you log in the next day. But sometimes that's actually a good thing. So you could use it for training or, or stuff like that. What I like about it is it has, it has payroll active, but it also has online banking. And you can see what's different about my, this sample versus mine is it the activity feed on the home page, but also this bank account. It's not just balances, but I show a number in a circle. 25 transactions were downloaded last night for this checking account. If I click on it, it's going to bring me into the bank and credit cards window. We, the same way I could get there is by transactions, banking. It would bring me to the same place. A lot like desktop, QBO, you can do things two to three different ways. What I like about it is there's, uh, you know, I, you can hook up to, just like with your other online banking, you could hook up to, you know, bank accounts as well as credit cards. Automate the data entry. I've showed you some data entry and how people can do it in QBO and try to equate it and, and some navigation tips, but we want to automate the data entry at the end of the day. And I think bank rules with the online banking so they don't have to write the check or the expense. Just download it and then add it to the register in a batch. This is really the way to go. So I have, for example, um, these are all the new transactions. I haven't added any in QuickBooks yet. And then transactions that are excluded, those are the ones we couldn't match for whatever reason, but there's already a duplicate in the register, so you're going to exclude them. That shouldn't happen a lot. 
So it'll be rare you have anything on the list there. If I go to Books by Bessie, notice it already found my customer, and I'm going to choose the account. We'll just choose an income account, which is um, going to be <clears throat> a design income. QBO will set it to design income from now on, but it could have just been a one-off, so I could leave it as uncategorized. But I want to create a custom rule for this stuff so that I don't have to do anything except add it. So I'm going to quickly add this one and leave it that it's always going to go to that for the next time a Books by Bessie transaction comes in through from my bank. Anything that's matched or stuff that we matched, um, let me ask, let's see, Michael asked, will accounting firms need to purchase the QBO software to access clients? No, not at all. QBOA is free for you. We'll get into that in about five minutes. So um, we're going to match transactions based on date, amount, uh, and customer or vendor. In the description field will usually be the, the name that was on the check. Um, and anything green is a transaction we recognize that came in from before, a similar one. Anything gray, no. But what about, you know, you can quickly just check off, right, batch action, add. Now i got four transactions in QuickBooks in the register, right? It's not going to create a dupe. It's just going to match it to a deposit that was already in there. Now, what about the banking rules? I have two here. A rental. Don't even know what that is. I know I have, think I have a vendor called A rental. I haven't set it up yet. Uncategorized. Let's set up a rule so that every time it comes in, QBO or automatically both categorizes it and sets it to the particular vendor. Click the drop down. You can upload files too from banks as well. Manage rules. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new rule. And I'm just going to call it A rental. It's going to be for money out. And for just checking, because this is the, only, the checking account is the only one that I would have this type of expense. And then I can choose either all or any criteria. I'll do any. The description contains rental, or I'm going to add a line for A. It always goes into this particular payee. And I'm going to create it on the fly, because you can plus new uh, list elements in QBO, just like you can in desktop. Click Save. Leave the details for later. Choose the category, Advertising. Click, and click Save. By the way, the criteria could be description, bank text, or amount. Works great for, like, gas station expenses when you figure everything over 50 bucks is probably something more than gas, or maybe over 100 you just do a cut, right, so it'll auto-categorize based on the amount if it's over or under, that kind of stuff. You're pretty tricky with this. Click Save. Go back to bank and credit cards, and it categorized the A rental. Not this one, because this was on the money in. This is money out. So I can choose them both, batch actions, accept. And then these are the ones in QuickBooks. You guys can undo it. And that's kind of automating and online banking. We'll do that there. So um, let's go into, let's talk about QuickBooks Online Account here. Now notice, I'm in through QBOA. Um, it, it looks a little different, right, versus where I was. Here was me. Here's the client. Let me try to tee it up, so I don't want to confuse you guys, right? Both the same URL, qbo.intuit.com, qbo.intuit.com. Yay, we've come back full circle to a same web address, not qboa.intuit.com, not office.intuit.com. It's nice, just like our clients go in, but because I'm the account and user or I'm a staff that was invited to an account and user's QBOA, I can work off the same list. And the, the list of clients that he gave me access to, by the way. That's what's exciting, too, about the new QuickBooks Online account. But I'm still in the file. There's no QBX transfer accounts copy backup portable blah. Right? I'm in the file in real time. I can go in and do my stuff, get out, move on to the next one. Okay? Very important. So I'm going to go back to QBOA. No, uh, Justin, good question. Does QBO work with QuickBooks Point of Sale? Not our current desktop solution of QuickBooks Point of Sale, but, oh, right, i got to log out. Sorry. When you're in the sample file, by the way, from QBOA, you got to sign out and then go in to see your list. So this QBOA demos at gmail.com, that is the account user on all these clients. And uh, so let's look at a couple questions here. First, no, so QBO doesn't work with our desktop POS, but we partner with Revel POS. It's an iPad POS for, for restaurants. That does work with QBO, and it's gonna, the partnership's going to roll out in product in February. And there's also third parties. I don't know the plan. We are investing in our desktop point of sale. A new version will be out in February, too, and, and I don't know the plan of it hooking up with QBO. Uh, do accountants have their own user and password to access QBO? Absolutely. 
So in, um, and let me back up to, to answer Michael's, because I think it'll answer a lot of other people's questions. I'm in the client file, all right? This is the client file. Gear icon, manage users. Accounting firms. You see this guy down here, Clayton Adams? This is also me. QBOA demos at gmail.com. This account and user is on all of my QBO client files as the account and user. And I only need one because I'm going to invite all my staff, I already did, to my QBOA. That's the platform I use to access and manage my clients from. So you would invite yourself as the account and user. And then all these clients here, see, here's go to demo file. It's a client because I'm the account and user on it. This is my QBOA. Right, it has a green top and it says QB Accountant, Ray Isaac and Abs LLC. Okay, and it's a client management tool. Let's talk about the client dashboard first. Different from those of you who used maybe the prior generations of QuickBooks Online Accountant. Still a good idea, but this we're going to start surfacing up data so you can prioritize your day. So I have Penny Hardware, We Care uh, Community Foundation Go To Demo File. They have some issues. 16 changes to closed books. Not good. I can drill in on that and just see more information without going into the QBO file yet. I can even hover over the QB icon and see the subscription and who last signed in. All that stuff is really important. All that stuff I used to have to go into the QBO file to get first, then come back out to go to the next client. Let's give you some surface info so you guys can then make an dis informed decision on who you're going to work on this morning without having to go into the file. Um, if I were to drill into the changes, it'll still keep me in QBOA, but bring me to a bookkeeping tab. Now I'm in kind of the client center, if you will, for this particular client that I have. I can see some account balances. And then if I click Review Now, it'll bring me into the QBO file to the audit log report. We're also going to surface up data for um, payroll, sales tax, things like that. Uh, what about your staff? Only QBOA demos at gmail.com is an account user on all my client files. I got 11 client files. But what about my staff? Uh, yeah, Rich. Rich says he's some, somehow not in the accountant version. I'm in the version that, that is blue. That was the older version of QBOA. We are going to, uh, well, it depends on what you're looking at. But, and I, I can't tell right now because I, I got about six minutes. But um, you, you, will, you can go to quickbooks.intuit.com slash accountant to sign up. For QBOA, I'll show you at the very end. And no, QBO doesn't yet have an offline app for field work. We have mobile work, mobile stuff, but it's always online. But we are working on a Windows client, a desktop client for QBO, and there are talks about, quote, unquote, an ability to, to move it offline if, if Internet goes out. Okay, so what about your staff? I'm the account using all the files, but I also have a staff. So, yeah, Rich, the, the one I'm looking at is the new version of QBOA, QuickBooks Online Accountant, that came out on the 4th of December. For those of you guys that already have the old QBOA, whether it's at QBOA or office.intit.com, we're going to migrate you by the end of January, maybe even sooner, to the new version. Or if, if you have another user ID you want to use or you, you never used QBOA, just go to quickbooks.intuit.com slash accountant. You can sign up there. So here's my team. They don't have to be an accountant user. They're coming in. We're all working off the same clients from the firm realm of QuickBooks Online Accountant. So if I were to go to, say, uh, you know, Emily here, who I invited, what kind of access does she have to the firm information, the firm credit card? Um, well, I even get, we give you guys a free QuickBooks Online file, too, for the firm that you can use, or for training, or to, or to convert your own desktop file. Does she have access to ARNAP? Can she mess with the subscriptions or anything like that? Uh, so you can do full, basic, or custom. And then client access. What files can Emily view when she logs in? Because she's going to come in with her own email, but we're all going to work off the same list. But I'm only giving her access to the David Evans, go to demo file, and Penny Hardware. She'll only see three of the 11, or I see all of them. And this was a big change over the last version of QuickBooks Online Accountant that we came out with. So easy to manage your staff and invite them from there. And then you can even add, uh, if you go back to the clients, this, this plus sign at the top, you can add a client or click add a client either way. This, we've also made this process easier. You're going to get clients that already have QBO, 
or they're going to go to QuickBooks.com and just create it, or you might create it there for them. But you might as well start in QBOA because you can create the subscription here. So I can choose like, uh, you know, Tasha uh, Clothing and choose the display name, fill out of the information, go to QuickBooks Products. I'm creating the QuickBooks Online sub right now from QBOA. I'll invite the client when I'm ready. After I convert, make sure the file's set up. What product does she need? Again, you might not know that 1099 is in plus. You're thinking, oh, I can just get them essentials, but click compare products. We're going to give you the visibility, right? And, and when you need plus, when you need essentials. And then let's say it turns out she needs plus, in this case, not with payroll. It's going to tell me how much it's going to cost. Here's the new retail pricing. Here's what the 50% off will be for the first year, assuming the billing choice is that the client's going to pay. And then I choose who the master admin is and put in their email. And they'll, you know, they're going to get an invite. Or if the firm wants to pay, and we do encourage this, especially if you're doing value billing, put in the firm credit card. Your client won't have a your account. Um, in, in their QBO file, they won't know, they won't see your credit card, the firm will be paying, it's 50% off for life of the subscription, and it now supports adding payroll. So that's also an important part of the new QBOA as well. So restricting staff from certain clients, inviting them so you're all working off the same list, surfacing up data about the file without having to go into the file yet, prioritize your day, add clients with more visibility. And then finally, we're giving you guys a portal Using with Box. Box.com is who we partnered with. 25 gigabytes of space for free. And then you can buy it in increments after that. But essentially I can, if this is for when, you know, you need a document. If you guys don't already have a portal system in play for the firm, I can choose the client, choose the user who's going to get the email, need 1098, you know, email body here, right? And then just 1098, and then do maybe, you know, last month's bank statement. When they get the email, they're going to see, they're going to have an option to upload both of these documents, and then I'll be notified in my QBOA when the documents are uploaded. So it's that kind of collaboration as well using the portal feature. So there's really four things with a new QBOA. Staff access, creating clients, wholesale billing, uh, surfacing up data in, in the portal feature. And then when you're ready to work on a file, I can go either from the client and just drill in here and then drill in over on the right, or I can click the client picker, the drop down. It's going to bring me into the file. It changes the top to light blue. And now, see, I've always been in QBO. Now I'm actually in the file to do work for the client. And for those of you who've ever been in accountant tool, uh, been in Q, uh, a QBO file as the account user before, your accountant tools used to be under the gear icon on the far left. Once you're under gear, now it's going to be under the the briefcase, the accountant toolbox. And this is where you can go batch classify miscoded transactions, avoid deleted transaction report. Uh, you can set up the the date range for all the reports and tools that you're going to use as the accountant in their file. And then we even have an ability to send the balance is to Intuit Tax Online. If you want to use Intuit Tax Online for 1040 or 1120, 1120S, um, once you clean up the data, you go books to tax, and you can it maps the accounts, sends it to the appropriate fields in the tax return. So it's kind of an online office, if you will, right? So that's what that's about. Now let's. So I'm going to go back to QuickBooks Online Accountant, and I'm going to finish up with some questions. It is now 12:15. So I just wanted to make sure I'm fair to your guys' time as well. But hopefully this was helpful. Um, I'm going to uh, log out of here before I get to questions. I'm going to sign out. And then let me go to a totally unrelated QBO. QuickBooks.com. Oh, QuickBooks.Intuit.com. Slash accountant. If you already have QBOA, oh, did I not spell it right? No. If you already have QBOA, don't worry. Um, we're going to migrate you, so you don't have to sign up. But if you wanted to sign up, this is everything for QBOA here. Link to Quickopedia, overview features, little videos, and you can sign up here and invite your staff. And then whoever you sign up with, that's going to be your account user on those client files, and they'll show up in your list too.